Welcome to your number one source for technological innovations, ideas, and strategies for your business. Multiply your business's equations and put the odds in your favor. Now, live from Club ITHQ with your hosts, Ben and Sam, this is Tech Factor. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ben. And I'm Sam. And this is The Tech Factor. The Tech Factor. Welcome to episode nine of The Tech Factor. We're slowly starting to creep up. Uh, so this is a podcast about driving businesses, productivity, and innovation utilizing technology. So today's episode, we're going to be talking about, a, uh, it's actually a really important topic. So it's about assessing software for your, for your business and you know how, trying to work out the best solution for your business's work case. So basically, it's about going, and look, this happens in every, every organization, you'll inevitably have a problem and you'll need to come up with a solution. And so you you look towards software and uh, you know, it's, it's important to understand the process and the best way of going about uh, doing this because, you know, a lot can be on the line, particularly if it's a a big project or a big change you're implementing in your organization. So, you know, you've got to get it right. So I always look, I do enjoy this topic and I think it's a a good one to um, start off with. I might start off with the first point. Sam and um, yeah, I mean, then you can maybe share some of your experiences and go on to the next point. Sounds so. good. So uh, the first one I really wanted to talk about was because you know the first, there are some things that people will start off as 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 number one, but I feel like this is the most important. It really is about understanding the crux of it, what you're trying to achieve. So often when you're looking at developing or putting in place a new solution or assessing a piece of software. It's normally for a reason, right? So you've normally go, oh, we've got this big problem or we've got this issue or whatever. So you'll have a particular issue around uh, some kind of productivity or, or some kind of um, compliance matter. So effectively doing a gap analysis is the is the first step. You, need, you want to understand what the current problems are in the organization. And most importantly, you want to understand and you want to document this, even in, a, say, a spreadsheet or a Google Sheet, where are you going to get the most benefit in terms of productivity? So you might say, for example, um, you're trying to track some particular KPI or something like that, and you go, well, if we can track this accurately, this might save us you know, $10,000 a month or something like that. I, I don't know, just as an example. So you, you want to really understand, identify, and prioritize those things that are going to get you that really big benefit. So uh, that may involve interviewing staff. It may, you know, talking to senior management, trying to get a really good understanding uh, particularly of those who will be utilizing the software or those that have those issues, it may even involve an internal audit process to really get to the crux of those those key priorities and really understanding what the current problems are within the organization. I can't stress it enough. I feel like that's probably the most important thing and certainly um, prioritizing uh, where you're going to get the most benefits because the reality of it is no matter what you do, whether you um, develop a solution from scratch or whether you, you're purchasing a piece of software and you're assessing um, a solution, it's never going to be 100% perfect. There are going to be things that maybe uh, you're not going to have. You might have 90% of what you want, but you might not have 10% of it. So it's really important to understand from the get-go what is the most important part of it. So what is the you know, the meat and potatoes of that 100% that you really must have that's going to get you the benefit? So doing the, that research up front uh, is really important, and that will involve talking to staff and, and senior management and really understanding what the crux of those problems are. So I, I feel like that's that's the really, if we, we can only talk about one point, that would be the, the most important point. But there are more points. And um, yeah, Sam, yeah, what, what are your I, thoughts? I, de- I definitely agree that that's definitely the most important thing. You can't even start to look at any of these other things until you know exactly why you need a new piece of software or exactly why you want to do something. So once you've got that out of the way, it's probably starting to look at like your minimum specifications, like uh, what does the software have to have and then look at all the little nice extras. So some of the nice extras might be how it looks or how easy it might be or whether it integrates with certain software, but just make sure that it does have your minimum specifications and without those, you're, you know, you're going in the wrong direction. If you don't put something in there that you need, and you've got all these pretty little extras on top of it, then you may as well just have not done anything at all. Um, but yeah, and and then probably I'm going to go into the, the next one here is understanding the end user. 
it doesn't really matter how good the software platform is. If if you get software that's not suited for your end user or that you, your users can't be sufficiently trained, then you're not going to get any advantages out of it at, at all. It, it's, a, it's a really important point about that because um, often, I mean, I mean, we, you know, you, both you and I have seen this uh, uh, quite a bit. Uh, it is one of those situations where, you have a really great piece of software, but it, again, if, if the end users aren't utilizing it properly, then you're not going to get any of the benefits. So you've got to really have a, a good pragmatic think about this one and go, okay, who are the, more, the the staff or my end users that are going to be using this platform realistically? What are their skills and capabilities? I feel like you can, you can certainly, you can do training and you can bring people up to a certain standard, but you've also got to be quite rational about it and go, look, this is the type of person that will be utilizing the system. If we want to get these specific productivity benefits that we identified early on, and we identified in our specification, you know, how, how are we going to frame this, and how are we going to, um, you know, in, in a practical sense, how is that going to work for the end user? How are they going to achieve those goals through this particular platform? So, understanding the end user is is really really important. Uh, so, again, that goes back to talking to them getting a feel of what their key competencies are and maybe previous software they've utilized, you know, again, understanding their age demographic and, you know, whether they, one of the things like I remember when we moved, there was one organization we moved across to um, G Suite uh, a, long, a long time ago. And um, and what happened there was we actually did a, a, we did a survey and one of the questions we asked people was, um, you know, have you ever used Gmail? Do you use Gmail at home? And you know, I think there was about 75, 80% of people had a Gmail account. So that was quite telling for us because then we're like looking at this going, okay, well, we can safely implement a G Suite solution knowing that the vast majority of people are using uh, Gmail at home. So they're familiar with some of the, the basics already. So, um, you know, understanding your end user is is really, uh, really key and uh, it's a, you know, again, I know Sam, yeah. you've had some experience with this as well. So. Yeah, definitely. It's it, it's sort of if you don't understand, you can go and implement some great pieces of software, but if you're not understanding who's going to be using it and how much training and the level of training that is needed, you know, some users will just be able to be shown it once and they'll just go ahead and do it. No worries at all. They'll learn as they go and they'll end up being your super users who can teach everybody else. But you will also definitely have staff and end users that will struggle to even do the basics with simple software and that will need a lot of hand-holding and guidance and training before they are comfortable using the software. Exactly. And... and <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, I wanted to go to the next subject, but I put yeah. the uh, little sound effects in there. Good idea. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. Um, so the, the the next one that really is quite important. So uh, I mean, chances are someone else has also been in the same situation before. So I mean, look, you know, it, it is. I mean, it's kind of common sense, but it's also something that um, you know you, you should do, if, particularly if it's a a reasonably common um, problem in the industry is, you know, ask your industry peers. So it never hurts. Uh, one of the things you'll quickly learn at the very least, you may not necessarily learn, you know, all the answers to your, to your solutions, but you'll certainly learn uh, probably what to avoid in terms of software. Yeah, and people will be pre- pretty quick to jump on the gun and tell you that this piece of software is crap or, you know, they've been having trouble with it for years or, you know, they submit a support ticket and they don't hear back for a week. You'll hear those things pretty quickly if you ask around. Yeah, I, I think that's it's a really good point. So the industry peers, you know, it never hurts. Just go ahead, ask around, see what other other people are using. Again, you, you may not necessarily have learned the entire um, picture of what you might be looking at in terms of solution, but you'll certainly very quickly learn what to avoid. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of the things that you see often, again, the sales material will say all these amazing things in the brochure, but it's good to understand the practical experience that, that people have with it. A particular solution so understanding that is is really um yeah it's really gold information that that um you know can give you some bit of bit of an insight as to you know how you how you might frame whatever solution you're looking at um for your business so um so the next one is integrations sam yeah, so just making sure that you, you've, you've got all those sort of integrations with existing infrastructure and software, it's important. Um, it's important, but often people will look at this without consideration for their initial research. So, 
integrations with some of your other software that you already use is definitely an important consideration, but definitely make sure you go ahead and you do your gap analysis and, and, and look at your minimum specifications before just jumping in and looking straight at your integrations. Because you might find that you, you are looking at a piece of software that, yep, it integrates great with our payroll system or whatever it may be, but it completely misses the mark on what you're actually wanting. And you can spend a lot of time, money and resources in implementing it, and it may not even end up being that great. So just because it integrates with something you've already got doesn't necessarily mean it's what you need. Yeah, not all integrations are equal, and and that's the thing. Like you can have an integration, and maybe it does only a very specific thing. And at the end of the day, what you should be focusing on is is really about those again when we identified the priorities initially in the gap analysis, and understanding you know what are the things we're going to get the most benefit out of in terms of productivity. And it's, it's not to say, man, maybe integration might be one of those. Maybe integration might be somewhere in the top ten of, of okay, if this, this talks to that, we're going to save ourselves X amount of staff hours a, a, a week or whatever. So maybe integration may end up being part of that analysis but again integration shouldn't be driving the solution you shouldn't be going okay well i want i need a new power system so i need one that integrates with my accounting and this and, and my hr and this and that should always look first i mean again integration is ideal and where you can achieve it you should always aim for it but um again it shouldn't be driving the process the the, the process should be driven by your gap analysis and understanding really what the crux of the issues are and making sure you, you resolve those because you know, again, you, if you can have a, you know an integration that again talks different aspects of your software, but if you're not solving the problems, there's no there's no point in having a piece of software integration for the sake of integration. So, it's important. It's something that you should all definitely consider, but it's not the first step in the process. And um, you know, again, understanding the initial stuff is really important. Identifying those priorities up front. Yeah, but, exactly. So, I, yeah, it's it's. Really, um, you know, and there's, there's plenty of examples of that where, you know, maybe we found a piece of software, it's great, it doesn't integrate, but it'll solve the problems and, and you, you look at that and you, you, just, you accept the reality of that because you're going to gain a lot more in the productivity benefits overall than what you would by just having an integration with a piece of software that doesn't solve the problem. So, uh, you know, that's that's one of the considerations and it, it's, it is a, a, a reality. Sometimes things don't fully integrate. Uh, and that's perfectly fine if it if it resolves the issue. Um, if it means people just have to open up another browser or a tab uh, or another application and they can achieve the same goals, then, uh, then that's perfectly fine. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and that sort of moves on to our next point, Ben, where we talk about budgets. So, you know, setting your budgets for software and how much the company or the business is willing to spend is definitely important, but it shouldn't drive the process because ultimately, if you go in with a budget first mentality, you could end up spending money and literally achieving nothing. You could you could be trying to save yourself some money and just end up getting nowhere. No value for money at all if you don't get anything out of it. So you definitely, in just about everything in life, you do get what you pay for. So don't spend too little, but just remember there is a point of diminishing returns. If you're not wanting to use all of the software's functions, potentially look at something that's not as feature rich and you might save yourself a little bit of money but definitely just keep that in mind spending too little is eventually going to get you nowhere and spending too much can just be throwing money out the window yeah so i guess that the really important point on this one here is to make that you know like a budget's important but again i wouldn't start off with budget as as a consideration it wouldn't be my number one uh thing on the mark just simply because of the fact that we don't know uh, without doing initial research, working out, um, you know, well, firstly, we don't know initial research. We don't know what this particular solution is worth worth to us as an organisation, because we because if we don't do the research and go, oh, okay, well, we're going to achieve these productivity benefits, so we're going to you know improve this compliance, and that's worth to us a hundred thousand dollars a year, for example. You know, if you don't do that up front, and you then you're going out and you're looking at software, and you go, oh, this software is going to cost us ten thousand dollars a year. You go, oh, that's really expensive. But then if you haven't done the research and gone, oh, what's well, going to be saving us $100,000 a year, go, well, that's not really that expensive. So, uh, you know, the, the budget, again, is is something that, again, is important. And oh, don't get me wrong, obviously, we all have budgets and, and we have to try and manage them appropriately. But it isn't uh, the initial consideration when looking at whether a software solution is going to suit for your business or not. 
it, it's important um, and there may well be cases where something is just so expensive that it completely um, blows out any productivity benefit you're going to get, in which case, obviously, you don't consider that solutions at those point in time. But, but again, you don't want budget to drive your process because the worst thing you could possibly do is before even assessing anything is go, right, our budget is just arbitrary number, say $1,000. And you go, okay. And then you look at software that's all that's within that budget, uh, but it could achieve absolutely none of what you're trying to do. So you can end up paying $1,000 and getting nothing out of it. Whereas maybe if you did the research and you go, okay, these are our productivity benefits. These are things we're trying to achieve. And you go, okay, well, we're going to try to you know, gain like let's say five grand worth of benefits a year. And, you know, so, you know, we found a piece of software that's $2,000 and you go, okay, well, it's $1,000 more than maybe if you would identify the budget up front, but you're actually fixing everything rather than fixing nothing for $1,000. So, you know, it, it, it's all relative and it's important to understand that, you know, you should never um, have budget driving the process. Uh, it's it's really important to make sure that you start off by understanding the problem first. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, really important one. And that's it's a good segue for the next um, section of it so yeah um, definitely seven. so so we and it does include into budgets as well is is you've got to think about what other upgrades may be required as part of the process if you've got software that could be running on a server that's a multi-user software you might be looking at needing a faster network within your business or you know upgraded workstations or even a beefier upgraded server so it's just often looking at those minimum risk rest- uh, requirements to running the software efficiently um, even speaking to the software company themselves can help and they can get a gr- good idea of what you've got and and might be able to con- help with the upgrades and what you might need to run it but it's just something to keep in mind is that that will include in your budget as well as if you do need to do any requirements in upgrades on your and yeah, again, a really important point because uh, you may find that uh, in order to opt- you know, operate a particular solution, ideally you need to have a, a certain um, network or infrastructure configuration that maybe you don't have right now. So it's important to keep that in mind, not so much from a budget budgeting perspective, but all but from more, mainly from assessing the solution. So one solution may require you to completely change the way you maybe do your network. One solution might not. You know, you know, that may be a good thing that they're trying to suggest that you change the network in a certain way. I'm, I'm not sure. But again, it would depend on the different scenarios. But it is something to consider. And uh, it's, it's important to understand what other, um, I guess, tertiary things would come out of uh, going down a particular path with a solution. And again, that could be, you know, as you said, something as simple as maybe installing your server or going with a different type of platform or you know, maybe you might need to install, maybe the, the solution is maybe, say, more Mac-based, so you may need some more Mac workstations or or maybe, for example, it's, um, you know, runs off tablets, you need a more, you need like a wireless yeah. network. Or, what, a certain or whether it's based on site or whether it's cloud software or... Mm. Again, so that, that'll come back to your your um, your share connection configuration, so your WAN configuration. Um, you know, if it's, a, if it's a cloud application, you want to know the bandwidth requirements. You may need to have redundant internet you may need to have additional fiber or, or whatever it might be to run that particular application uh, so it's important to to assess all that stuff as well to understand uh, the solution that you're looking at yeah so the last one uh, and probably one of the most important ones as well is that inevitably when you decide with to go with a particular solution and even it ticks all the boxes uh, there's still the um, ongoing management of whatever that solution is so that comes down to support and uh, it's very you know this is the this is the after sales bit right so you've gone through the process you know you've sent all the pretty brochures you've done all your research you've signed on the bottom line you've installed it and then there's the support so support is one of those things that I, I, I feel like it's you know it is it's really really important and is one of those ones that uh, probably gets overlooked a little bit uh, and often it can also mean you know the difference between how well a solution uh, is received in an organization and how uh, well it is implemented because the ongoing support is, is just just critical. Um, and there's a whole heap of different things to look into when you're looking at the support like uh, what what kind of support does the company offer or where is their where is their office based? So you know if you're in Australia and you're 
software company's support offices in the United States. Well, that might mean drama for you if you need assistance and it's 4 a.m. in another country. So, Or is do you have end users that are capable and are fine with ringing a customer support line in, say, India or Sri Lanka compared to finding something locally. So just lots of different things to look at when it comes to support. And, you know, for great support, you want someone who's local. So someone that's based in the same country as you, someone who offers um, even up to, you know, seven-day-a-week support or at least six-day-a-week support. Um, And how tentative are they? You know, are you going to submit a ticket and someone reply to you within a few hours or are you going to submit a ticket and hear from from them in a few weeks? Mm. Yeah, the re- really important one there because we certainly have seen that um, in a number of cases with a range of solutions over the years where the support can vary quite significantly. What you can do up front is you can ask the uh, provider of the solution uh, what their SLA is. An SLA is a service level agreement which um, outlines basically uh, how quickly they will respond to particular issues based on the priority of that particular issue. So really important to understand that and just make sure they understand your industry as well because lots of solutions um, are multi-industry. So I'm making sure they understand the industry and, you know, like, for example, like the clubs and game industry, right, um, you know, they're, they're very busy on a Friday and Saturday night. Uh, there are certain day, times of the days of the week where you maybe want to, like, I mean, you know, maybe if, you're, if your solution, um, let's say the, the particular solution you've decided to implement, uh, maybe they're primarily, um, say, in... I don't know the den- the dental industry, but then they all step in. Then they're implementing this solution for you, and you're in the clubs industry. Uh, they might go in and go, "Oh, that's fine. We can go ahead and um, and we can do a server upgrade or do a migration upgrade on the Saturday night or something like that." But in fact, that's one of the busier nights for the clubs, so uh, you'd be causing all kinds of chaos. So making sure they really understand the guts of your industry and, and when it's okay and not okay to provide support, or when you need the support the most, you know, or I when you should be there for you. Moments. Yeah, exactly. So. I mean, they're, they're really the, the key considerations. And uh, it's really important to go through that process when assessing uh, software for your business. Uh, it isn't a simple equation, but it, you know, if, if you go through that process, you, you'll get some really good outcomes. And that's really what it comes down to. There isn't, you know, and again, you've got to also look at it from a practical point of view in the sense that you won't have a solution that will provide an answer to every single one of your problems. And that's why it's important to go through a process like this to really, you know, understand those problems and understand the priorities and, and really get a good feel for, for what, you, what you're what you trying to achieve. But, you know, if you do all this and you, and you follow these steps, and I'll just quickly, re- we'll quickly rehash over them before we finish up, uh, you know, you, you'll get a really good solution and you'll get the benefits of it. I mean, IT, that's what, what the whole purpose of what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to, um, you know, create more problems or more barriers for users. We want to make things easier. We want to make things faster. And we want to find ways that we can identify to save money and improve productivity. And that's, that's what we're all about at Clow IT and what we do, but it's also what IT should be about as well. And I, I think it's really important, you know, again, we talked about the user-centric approach, and I think that's really, really important when you're assessing software solutions. So so just to reassess, uh, we talked about gap analysis, so really understanding what the current problems are in your organization, where you can get the most benefits. You want to list those benefits, come up with a priority, come up with a priority list and say, look, these are the, 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 the crux of it, where we're going to get our most benefit. That then develops your specifications and, and your, your minimum stuff you, you need, your meat and potato to get the stuff done, and then your nice haves. And then understand the end user, really, really important. Make sure you know exactly who the person is going to be using it is. Uh, you know, go through, make sure that, um, you know, from a practical point of view that, that it'll be suitable for them and they can utilize the platform. Uh, sufficient training and, um, and yeah, make sure that that end user, they can, that they'll be able to master it, uh, that they'll be able to make, take, you know, get the get all those advantages that we talked about at the start out of the platform, uh, and then obviously um, you know doing your research, talking to your peers, uh, integrations again. Then considering integrations at that point, understand uh, what integrations may be available, uh, your budget, your upgrades that um, Sam talked about, and your support as well. Then making sure that your support aspect is is covered off. Any final thoughts, 
Zam. Yeah, I, I think as long as you follow through those steps, I mean, it, it can be daunting in that, but just going through it one by one with each different possible solution and, and just getting assistance where you can, going through each one of those steps, I think you'll end up finding you'll, you'll grab something that'll do pretty much exactly what you need within your budgets and you shouldn't have too much drama implementing it and getting support. And I mean, look, and it's a dummy afraid to ask for help, right? I mean, I, I know that. I mean, some some organisations I have seen where they go, they'll try and do these assessments in in house. Uh, look, it's totally fine to to get a consultant. Again, you know, I'm not just tooting our own horn, but you know, a lot of the all the times we've seen these types of problems before, and you know, it, we can utilise our own experience uh, in in industries, and particularly in the industries that we specialise in, uh, to really sort of uh, understand those problems and also. We may understand or may have seen other solutions out there that, that we know that work and I know that doesn't work. That really goes back to that industry peers thing. So, you know, if you are learning a, a large project and, and maybe it's a little bit daunting, don't be afraid to get a consultant involved. You know, bring in some third parties, you know, and, and get some extra advice. It, it doesn't hurt, particularly if you're talking about a, a large solution and a solution that your your staff will be using for many years to come. You, you know, you want to get it right. So... That is the tech factor. That is assessing software for your business and, and working out the uh, the best solution. I'm Ben. And I'm Sam. And we'll see you guys on Friday. Take care.